if you've watched Jurassic World Dominion, you probably remember the massive, spine-chilling predator introduced as the biggest carnivore to ever walk the earth. That was Gigantosaurus. But how much of that Hollywood hype matches reality? Gigantosaurus was indeed one of the biggest, baddest meat-eating dinos to ever stomp the planet. It lived way back in what's now Patagonia, Argentina, during the early Cenomanian stage of the late Cretaceous. So we're talking around 95 to 99 million years ago. This dinosaur was first uncovered in 1993 by fossil hunter Ruben Carolini in the Candelaris Formation. What's really surprising is they found almost 70% of its skeleton, which is pretty insane for a dino this old. They officially named it Gigantosaurus Carolini in 1995, basically meaning Giant Southern Lizard. And this species name is a shout out to Carolini himself. Before that, bits like teeth, a jawbone, and even some footprints were already floating around and later linked to this mega predator. Now, when it comes to size, Gigantosaurus is kind of the subject of a paleontology debate club. Since no full skeleton's been found yet, estimates vary, but the most complete specimen suggests it was anywhere from 12 to 13 meters long. That's like 39 to 43 feet, with a skull about five to six feet long, and a weight that could range from around four to nearly 14 tons. A super big jawbone hints some individuals might have pushed up to 13.1 meters or 43 feet throwing down the gauntlet to T-Rex for the crown of the biggest land predator. Most experts agree they were pretty neck and neck in size though. Looking closer, Gigantosaurus had a long, low skull with rough, bumpy nasal bones and a sharp ridge right in front of its eyes, giving it a fierce look. Its jaws were packed with sideways compressed, serrated teeth perfect for slicing up meat and it had this cool chin on its lower jaw that probably helped it handle the stress of biting hard. It's part of the Carcharodontosauridae family, cousins with other huge predators like Maposaurus, Tyrannotitan, and Carcharodontosaurus. Scientists think Gigantosaurus was homothermic, which is fancy talk for warm-blooded enough to grow fast and hunt hard. It likely chased down massive herbivores, especially younger titanosaurs, Basically, Gigantosaurus was the alpha of the crew in its herd, a different kind of giant compared to the famous T-Rex, built more for slicing and chasing than just smashing. Gigantosaurus shook things up, because it might just be bigger than the famous Tyrannosaurus rex. Its thigh bone was actually longer than that of Sue, the largest and most complete T-Rex specimen ever found. Then came news of its cousins, like Carcharodontosaurus from Africa, which made everyone rethink what the biggest carnivores were back in the day. People argue over who really took the crown, but what's clear is these southern giants were absolute monsters that ruled their parts of the world. More cool discoveries, like a huge jawbone and giant free-toed footprints, helped fill in the picture. Back in the early 2000s, scientists were busy trying to nail down just how big the Gigantosaurus really was. And it wasn't easy. In 2001, Frank Seebecker came up with a new way to estimate dino weight using body length, width, and depth, and he pegged Gigantosaurus at around 6.6 .6 tons, based on the original 12.5 meters, or 41 foot, length estimate. Over the years, paleontologists kept debating the details. Some studies put the skull length at about 1.52 meters, that's 5 foot and the weight anywhere from 4 to 13 tons, depending on which bones they measured and how they did the math. For example, Gigantosaurus had a longer femur than Sue, but a shorter lower leg bone, which made comparisons tricky. Around 2005, new discoveries of related giants like Spinosaurus and Maposaurus popped up, shaking up the game even more. Spinosaurus was estimated to be even longer up to 18 meters or 59 feet, but it lived a more aquatic lifestyle, which is still debated. So it's probably a different kind of monster. Meanwhile, Maposaurus was a Patagonian cousin, 
about the same size as Giganotosaurus. By 2007, some researchers thought Giganotosaurus could reach up to 43 feet and weigh as much as 15 tons, rivaling or even surpassing Tyrannosaurus in size. However, skulls were incomplete, so all these size estimates came with a big, maybe? Rolling into the 2010s and beyond, scientists were still going back and forth. Some experts argued the skulls had been reconstructed too long, and others said Tyrannosaurus might still edge out Giganotosaurus in weight because of its wider torso. More recent studies have averaged Giganotosaurus's weight around 6.7 tons, but with some variation, depending on the specimen, of course. In short, Giganotosaurus was a massive powerhouse. It might not hold the crown over T. rex in every way, but it remains one of the largest land predators that we've ever discovered. And since we only have a handful of fossils, there's always the chance a bigger one is still waiting to be found. Let's break down that skull, because Giganotosaurus had a pretty distinctive one. Even though the full picture isn't complete, what we do know is impressive. Its head was long, low, and built for cutting, with an upper jaw carrying a 92 centimeter, or about three foot, row of teeth. More than enough to make quick work of prey. The snout had a pronounced bump beneath the nostril, and a small oval-shaped opening called a fenestra, a feature it shares with predators like Allosaurus and even T-Rex. The surface of the skull wasn't smooth either. The nasal bones are rugose, rough and wrinkled, like weathered armor, and those textures stretched backwards across the snout. Right in front of the eyes, the lacrimal bone formed a prominent, crest-like projection, angled backward, almost horn-like in appearance, and covered in deep grooves. Behind the eye, the post-orbital bone hooked downward into the socket, a setup seen in other heavy hitters like Carnotaurus and Abelisaurus. The top of the skull was also unusual. It formed a broad shelf over the rear openings of the skull, which changed how the jaw and neck muscles were arranged. This design gave Giganotosaurus a wide, powerful bite and strong neck muscles, perfect for gripping and tearing into prey. And then there were the teeth. They were laterally compressed, blade-like, and serrated, designed for slicing. Some of the largest front teeth even had pronounced wrinkles along the enamel near the edges, likely for added strength. Its neck, thick and powerful. The first vertebra connecting to the skull, the axis, was especially sturdy, built to support that massive head. The neck bones were short, wide, and partially hollowed out, making them strong yet surprisingly lightweight. Further down the spine, the back vertebra had tall arches, while the tailbones carried long spines and reinforced joints, giving the tail a mix of strength and flexibility. The shoulders were shorter than a T-Rex's, with a compact, hook-shaped coracoid, and a sturdy shoulder blade for anchoring key muscles. Then there's the pelvis and legs, built for serious strength and stability. The hips flared for muscle attachment. The thigh bone had that classic theropod S-shape with deep muscle grooves, and the shin bone widened at the top for strong joints while staying flattened for efficiency. When it was first described, scientists placed it within the big theropod group Tetanuri, based on features in its legs, skull, and pelvis, but they also noted it didn't belong to the more advanced group, Coelurosauria, where T. rex and raptors sit. In 1996, Paul Serino and his team took things further. Giganotosaurus shared some very specific traits with Carcharodontosaurus and Acrocanthosaurus, like that broad shelf of bone over the eye socket and the squared off tip of the lower jaw. That led scientists to group these giants into the family Carcharodontosauridae, a branch of the superfamily Allosauridae. Basically, the heavyweight predators that came after the Allosaurus but long before the T-Rex. As more giant hunters were found, the picture sharpened. Thomas Holtz defined Carcharodontosauridae as all allosauroids closer to Carcharodontosaurus than to Allosaurus. By 2006, Rodolfo Coria and Philip Curry 
created the subfamily Gigantosaurinae, based on femur traits. Then, in 2008, Severino and Brissat grouped Gigantosaurus, Mapasaurus, and Tyrannotitan into the tribe Gigantosaurinae, a crew of truly massive predators. It was thought that the giant size seen in different theropods might have evolved because they faced similar environmental pressures or conditions. But later, Paul Serino and his team pointed out that Carcharodontosaurids, like Carcharodontosaurus in Africa, Acrocanthosaurus in North America, and Gigantosaurus in South America, show this group was spread across continents way back in the early Cretaceous. But by the late Cretaceous, oceans had cut off connections between northern and southern continents, creating isolated ecosystems with their own unique dinosaurs. Before this, people believed the northern continents were ruled by Tyrannosaurids, South America by Abelisaurids, and Africa by Carcharodontosaurids. So, Giganotosaurus seems to have stuck mainly to Gondwana, the southern supercontinent made up of South America and Africa, where they were the top predators. The South American group, called Gigantosaurini, likely split from their African cousins when Gondwana started breaking apart during the early Cretaceous, leading to distinct dinosaur lineages on each landmass. Back in 1999, paleontologists checked out the bones of Giganotosaurus and T. rex, and found that their oxygen isotope patterns were basically twins. What does this mean? These dinos had similar heat flow inside their bodies, which tells us that they weren't cold-blooded like reptiles, but not full-on warm-blooded like mammals either. Instead, they had this middle-ground metabolism called homeothermy. Basically, they kept their core body temperature steady, a kind of warm-bloodedness that helped them grow fast and stay active. For an 8-ton Giganotosaurus, their metabolism was kind of like that of a 1-ton mammalian predator. That's some serious energy right there! Then, in 2001, physicist Rudimar Blanco and Gerardo Mazetta tackled the big question. How fast could a beast this size actually run? Some folks thought that giants like Giganotosaurus couldn't risk running fast, because if they tripped and fell, the injuries would be brutal. But Blanco and Mazetta said, nah. The real limit wasn't falling, it was about balance. They calculated how quickly the leg could stabilize after the other leg lifted, and figured Giganotosaurus could sprint up to 31 miles per hour, or 50 kilometers an hour. Not bad for a giant. Also, comparing it to an ostrich was kind of pointless, because unlike birds, these dinos had heavy tails that threw off their balance. So their running style was a whole different ballgame. Fast forward to 2017, and William Sellers and his team ran the numbers on T-Rex's running abilities and came up with a surprise. Those long legs didn't mean it was a speed demon. The loads on its skeleton were just too much, making it more of a steady walker than a sprinter. They figured the same went for other big theropods like Giganotosaurus and Mapasaurus. So maybe these giants weren't chasing down prey at full throttle, but were still impressive hunters in their own right. Giganotosaurus had some pretty impressive tools for hunting. First off, its vision. Unlike T-Rex, which had forward-facing eyes and fantastic depth perception, Giganotosaurus had a narrower field of binocular vision, probably around 20 to 25 degrees, because its eyes were set a bit more to the sides of its long skull. That meant it wasn't seeing the world in crisp, 3D detail like a hawk, but it had a much wider field of view. In open, Cretaceous landscapes, that's a huge advantage for spotting movement from prey or rivals. Then there's the sense of smell, and this is where Giganotosaurus really shines. It's olfactory bulbs, the brain regions responsible for processing scents, were actually very well developed even more so than in T. rex. This tells us it had a strong, almost bloodhound-like ability to sniff out prey or track carcasses over long distances. Whether it was chasing down a live juvenile sauropod or finding a fresh kill to steal, that nose was doing a lot of the work. What about hearing and balance? Studies of its close relatives suggest Giganotosaurus 
had good hearing, particularly for low-frequency sounds, the kind that can travel far across open ground. Combined with an inner ear built for balance and a long, counterbalancing tail, this predator could stay stable while making quick, decisive movements. And then there's the brain. At around 27.5 centimeters, or 10.8 inches, it wasn't big compared to its body, hence why it's often jokingly nicknamed the banana brain. But size isn't everything. Its encephalization quotient, EQ, falls in the mid-range for theropods, meaning it was smart enough for complex hunting strategies, processing sensory cues, and maybe even some level of social behavior if it ever hunted in groups. So how does this all come together? Trigonotosaurus wasn't a vision-focused, bone-crushing predator like T. rex. Instead, it relied on a keen sense of smell, solid all-round vision, sharp hearing, and excellent balance to track, approach, and take down its prey. Likely targeting young or slower sauropods. Back in 2002, scientists spotted some cool features at the back of Giganotosaurus's skull that hinted it could move its head side to side pretty well. Thanks to a sloping occiput and a wide occipital condyle, this sideways motion was probably helped by big, strong jaw muscles. Unlike Tyrannosaurus, which bulked up their lower jaw muscles for crushing power, Giganotosaurus and its cousins shifted their jaw joints back to lengthen those muscles, letting them snap their jaws shut faster. Fast forward to 2005. Ferian and his team looked into bite force. Turns out, Giganotosaurus had a weak bite, especially further back in the mouth. Those lower jaws were more like sharp knives slicing through flesh, and it likely hunted mostly smaller or younger prey. Think juvenile sauropods. That funky chin on its lower jaw probably helped it handle the stress when biting down hard up front. Then there's Mapasaurus, a close cousin, whose fossils were found together in a bone bed with individuals of all ages. Coria and Curry thought this wasn't just random. It looked like a group that lived and maybe hunted together. The bone bed probably came from a disaster, and the mix of mostly medium-sized individuals fits with animals that move in packs. So, yeah, these big predators might have teamed up to take down giant sauropods. Talk about a killer squad. Giganotosaurus comes from the Candelarus Formation. This formation is to the lowest layer of the Nequen group, specifically within the Rio Lime subgroup. It's made up mostly of coarse to medium sandstones, formed by rivers and streams, with some layers shaped by wind. You will also find buried soils, siltstones and claystones in there. A few even point to ancient swamps. In this landscape, Dragonotosaurus likely ruled as the apex predator, it shared its turf with massive plant eaters, like the Titanosaur and Asaurus, and Rebaccasaurid sauropods, such as Lemaisaurus. Other carnivores roamed there too, including a Crixinatosaurus and Buitraraptor. The ecosystem also hosted croc like Arari Pesuchus, snakes, Sphenodontitans, and the turtle Brachelidella. Mammals, frogs, and lungfish rounded out the mix. Oh, and fossil tracks show that big ornithopods and even pterosaurus were around too, making this a pretty lively place for Giganotosaurus to hunt. <laughs>